expand uh, the processing. Presenting for them is uh, Oliver Turner, EVP of Corporate Development, and previously is with GMP. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan, and uh, great to be back at Denver. Uh, thank you, everyone, here for, uh, for attending. As uh, Dan mentioned, we are located in Western Australia. We have two producing assets in the Beta Hunt Mine and the Higginsville Mine, both feeding into our centralized mill. We will be growing production, as you can see on this slide, to 200,000 ounces a year over the next three years. Uh, we're expanding from 100,000 ounces this year to 200,000 ounces by 2024. The customary forward-looking statements and disclaimer, invite everybody to read those on our website. And just as we kick off, one of the most important things to us at Core Resources and the sector in general is being uh, stewards of our capital and, and making sure that we focus on ESG. At Core Resources, we're proud to say we've partnered with a company called the Net Zero Company to focus on our greenhouse gas emissions. And we're also proud to say that we are now the world's first carbon neutral gold producer. We will be taking a two-prong approach. We'll be developing a long-term emissions reduction plan, and we've also invested in some Australian reforestation projects, which everybody remembers the bushfires of 2019. We're happy to be part of the solution there in reforesting Australia and generating some carbon credits from the project. Stepping into our assets, we are located in the best jurisdiction in Western Australia, the Kalgoorlie Belt. Everyone here, I'm sure, is familiar with that belt. We're about 60 kilometers down the road from the Kalgoorlie Super Pit, where 60 million ounces in the gold mile is hosted. Beta Hunts is our first mine that you see at the top of the graphic here. Another 60 kilometers down the road gets you to the Higginsville Mill, which is part of our very large land package, which is 1,900 square kilometers covering the Kalgoorlie Belt. In fact, that's one of the largest coverages of that belt uh, in existence and in ownership under one uh, company. It's been a bit of a transformation over the last uh, two years, and certainly since we were at Denver in 2019, it's been a, a transformational couple of years for us. Uh, not enough time to go through all of them, but some of the most foundational things that we've done or transformational things we've done is elimination of royalties across both properties. Both properties were subject to very onerous royalty uh, uh, agreements that uh, had been in place for the better part of 10 uh, to 12 years. We unwound the one at, uh, at Higginsville and by Morgan Stanley, and we also renegotiated the one at Beta Hunt, which has opened up both assets for both uh, lower cost production as well as tremendous exploration upside. And I'm happy to share some of that success with you today. We exited 2020 with $80 million in the balance sheet. We have over $80 million in the balance sheet still uh, in the second quarter after deploying $35 million into pre-development work in our growth plan. The shareholder registry has uh, dramatically uh, reflected our strong share price growth, and we're happy to have our shareholders. And moving forward to 2020, we expect to produce 105 to 115,000 ounces this year at all in sustaining costs around about the $1,000 mark. We're well on track to meeting that guidance this year so far. Of course, we announced our major growth plan at the end of June in 20, 2021, and I'll be outlining some of that for you today, but it's focused on our primary asset beta hunt as well as our Higginsville mill. Our chairman and CEO is Paul Hewitt, the former uh, chairman and CEO of Klondex, uh, needs no introduction, uh, had a tremendous amount of success with that company, and a very similar model to what we're doing here at Corora Resources with respect to bolting on additional assets and tucking them into a centralized mill. He did that to great success with Klondex. Graham Sloan on the right is uh, certainly uh, has a great following in, in Australia. And as Ryan was mentioning in the previous uh, presentation uh, with Fosterville, Graham is the man that built Fosterville as part of that team and had tremendous success there. And we're very thrilled to have him as part of our team. And he's been critical to the operational turnaround that the market has seen over the last eight quarters. The team's rounded out by myself, uh, formerly uh, a mining analyst at GMP Securities, uh, Barry Dahl, the former CFO of Klondex, and Michael Doolin, our SVB of Technical Services, brings a lot of technical expertise, also ex-Klondex. Our track record since acquiring the Higginsville Mine and Mill in mid-2019, we acquired that for $50 million Australian from West Gold at the time. Uh, it's been transformational for our company and, and providing us uh, control of our destiny with our own mill, as well as dramatically reducing costs. On this slide here, you see eight quarters of uh, fantastic quarterly delivery, averaging about 25,000 ounces a quarter with a steadily declining all in sustaining cost balance. And you can see in the second quarter, as we ramp up into this growth plan, we recorded an excellent quarter, almost 30,000 ounces with another outstanding cost performance. Expect those costs to continue to trend down over the next three years, as I'll outline with our growth plan. 
This is the path to the 200,000 ounces a year by 2024. We were extremely excited to get this out to the market. It took a lot of work by, uh, by our engineering team and, and consultants in Western Australia. Um, we put that out to the market at the end of uh, June, and this has mapped out our path to 200,000 ounces as well as declining cost profile. Stepping into some of the details here, you can see our outline of our, of our three years and how they're going to look uh, moving ahead of us. One area I would like to draw everyone's attention to is the exploration and re resource development spend. Uh, pre previous owners of our property are spending about $300,000 a year on exploration on the, one of the largest land packages in Kalgoorlie. And that was a direct reflection of the royalty structure that kind of handcuffed these assets for the better part of 12 years. We are now spending $20 million a year. We spent $15 million last year with eight drills across our property, and it translated into tremendous resource growth. We announced well over 100% growth of both of our assets, and we expect to enjoy additional resource growth with an update in the first quarter of next year. This is the roadmap or the, the milestones that we have to check off in order to get to that 200,000 ounces a year. As I mentioned previously, it's going to be focused on two primary areas. Beta Hunt, our underground mine, is going to be expanding from 1 million tons per annum to 2 million tons per annum over the next two and a half years. And our phase two mill expansion at the Higginsville facility will take our mill from 1.6 million tons per annum to 2.5 million tons per annum. And that mill will be fed, as, as is obvious, uh, predominantly by uh, Beta Hunt at 2 million tons per annum. This is the mill expansion. $50 million Australian goes into the mill in order to expand it. It's got a fantastic footprint. We're adding tanks at the end of the mill and as well as some front end crushing and grinding. But it is a very simple expansion, very low risk expansion, and we're uh, looking forward to executing on it. This is our project pipeline. Uh, one thing we have no shortage of at uh, Corora is many projects. In fact, we inherited a list of 32 brownfields targets and advanced exploration targets from Westgold when we purchased the asset from them in, in 2019, as well as many targets at our beta hunt operation. Today, I'm gonna focus on the beta hunt expansion the Larkin, which is our newest zone at uh, Beta Hunt, as well as the 50C Nickel, and the Lake Cowan Regional Potential, we just uh, put a press release out on a couple hours ago. Stepping into Beta Hunt, which is the flagship asset, it's a storied operation. Uh, long before it was a gold operation, it was in fact a nickel operation for the better part of 40 years. Stepping into some of the graphics to show some of the infrastructure, you can see there's a lot of infrastructure in place at Beta Hunt. That is a direct result of a long history of mining uh, at Beta Hunt and the nickel uh, sort of sphere, and now we switched over into gold. We have leveraged that existing infrastructure to tremendous uh, success, both with respect to operational costs, but also exploration. And one of the areas that I'm going to highlight is, is the Larkin Zone, which this time last year we had just announced the discovery of. And I'm happy to say, fast forwarding to, to a year later, we've now drilled it off over a kilometer of strike length with almost no development costs required. Doubling our production at Beta Hunt is going to involve the duplication of what we're already doing very successfully, which is the addition of a second decline. We're currently doing 1 million ton per annum out of our first decline, and uh, our operational turnaround over the last uh, eight, eight quarters has certainly demonstrated how well we've leveraged that existing decline. We're going to be adding a second decline, which you can see on the slide here in, in uh, gold. Um, that's going to be also accessing the, the ore body, but from the other side of the ore body, we'll be able to access these long, uh, shear zones that we have that are very continuous from the other side. We put that portal location for the second decline in a very strategic location. And we announced on Wednesday of last week that surface drilling at this second location had in fact encountered a 40 meter wide shear zone, which we believe to be the up plunge extension of the primary two zones, which you see in the lower part of this screen right here, Western flanks and A zone. Now Western flanks is around 15 meters wide. We encountered a 40 meter wide shear zone on the top. That is a 700 meter up plunge step out that validates our theory that we believe that those, th those two zones continue up towards surface is very important to note that that means as we're driving the second decline, we will be able to be mining ore, AKA generating cash flow as we're mining it, which we're very excited to, uh, to get into. With respect to, uh, to Beta Hunt, there's certainly no shortage of these broad shear zones that I mentioned. They are very, very continuous, and we continue to add resources every single year. In the uh, upper left portion of this, you see where the portal is in A zone north and western flanks north of the two areas I just discussed. 
We also have the Fletcher Shear, the East Alpha Shear, and our newest addition to uh, potential resources next year, the Larkin Zone, and then a very exciting nickel opportunity in the 50C nickel trough towards the south. All of this accessed by existing infrastructure. On Wednesday of last week, again, we announced an update on, on the Larkin Zone as well extensions to Western Flanks and uh, North and A Zone North. Um, the Larkin Zone has been drilled off over a kilometer of strike length in just one year, which is tremendous. Put over 16,000 meters of drilling into it as part of our Diamond Drill Underground Program. We expect to bring Larkin into resource in the first quarter of next year with our update, updated reserves, but it is looking like a very chunky addition to the resource. An example of how we leveraged existing infrastructure to discover Larkin is right on this slide, which we showed last year as the discovery slide. On the bottom, you see an underground development drift. That drift has been in place for over 25 years. When we unwound our royalty at Beta Hunt, we went back underground there and we channel sampled the wall. And on the bottom of that graphic there, you see 14.4 meters of five grams per ton. We knew immediately that we had found another shear zone at Beta Hunt. We threw a drill, drilled through the back, and uh, we encountered another nickel zone at the same time within five meters of the gold zone. The relationship between the historic nickel and the gold at Beta Hunt is very important. The nickel sits in these nickel troughs right on top of these vertical shear zones, meaning that we can leverage the exact same infrastructure that was in place to mine historic nickel to mine our current gold, uh, gold shear zones, as well as additional uh, gold deposits that we find. The grades are fantastic, and they certainly provide us some excellent byproduct credits from the nickel. Continuing on the nickel front, a few months ago, we announced the discovery of the 50C nickel trough. The beta in the name Beta Hunt came from the Beta South Mine, which produced 32,000 nickel tons for the previous operators at excellent grades, but not grades as strong as the ones that we announced at 50C nickel trough, which were 11 and 18% nickel. Now we are aggressively drilling out the nickel story at Beta Hunt with a dedicated nickel team. And we now have 16 holes into the 50C nickel trough, all of which have encountered nickel sulfides. We do not have assays yet. Unfortunately, in Western Australia, we're subject to the same delays in assay turnaround times as everyone else in the industry, but we're very excited to get those results back. If you take a step back and look what we produced last year in terms of nickel, we mined 2.9% nickel and returned byproduct credits of about $30 an ounce US. BHP, who's located immediately adjacent to us, buys our ore right off surface. We do not have our own nickel processing facilities, nor do we need them. So at 2.9%, we generated three, uh, $30 an ounce in byproduct credits. So needless to say, we're very excited to see what comes in for the 50C nickel grades and that what that could do to our all in sustaining cost profile. That is not included in the growth plan numbers, which I showed you earlier. Of course, everybody knows that Beta Hunt has plenty of core school. The Father's Day vein discovery in late 2018 was a, a transformational point for the asset. We still do encounter core school. We get 100% recovery of what we mine out in our stopes, and we get 100% recovery of that in the gravity circuit at the front end of our mill. We enjoy it. However, we have proven over the last two years that mining at the average grade of the deposit, 2.6 grams per ton, we generate very strong free cash flows as a result of our very low cost profile. Stepping into Higginsville, which is the large land package and mill that we acquired from Westgold for $50 million Australian in mid-2019. Higginsville has come a long way. We've had a lot of drilling to do and we've been mining several different deposits. Higginsville has been split into two core areas. We have Higginsville Central, which is the higher grade area, approximately a 10 kilometer radius around the mill, where the majority of our producing assets are focused today. Higginsville Greater, you can see a much larger tenement boundary there that covers the 1900 square kilometers that we own on the Kalgoorlie Belt. Um, the, mo the majority of those ounces, a million ounces of 1.3 grams, sit down at the bottom of Mount Henry there, which is certainly a very interesting project we're looking at analyzing further and potentially bringing into our growth plan in future years, but is not prior of the growth plan that we talked about before. Stepping into Higginsville Central, we've been mining open pits very successfully at, uh, at Higginsville Central. Hidden Secret and Mouse Hollow are two, two gram open pit head grade uh, feed to the mill sources that we've had for a while, but we're stepping into two higher grade underground opportunities, which will be coming online in the third and fourth quarters of this year, which will be helping to elevate our grade profile as we step into that growth plan in 2022. They are Aquarius and Two Boys. 
Aquarius, you can see some graphics right here. These are uh, right out of the camera from last week, uh, very fresh photos. Um, that's the box cut going uh, underground at Aquarius. We are now driving our portal. We expect to be into ore in the fourth quarter of this year at Aquarius. Um, some tremendous drilling results you can see uh, depicted on this, uh, this slide right here, you know, 650 grams over two meters. Um, it is a steeply dipping narrow vein deposit, which is the specialty of some of the members of our, on our team. The historic grade of the Aquarius resource is 1919 grams per ton. That will be coming online in the fourth quarter and we're excited to get into it. The other mine that we're bringing online at Higginsville Central is the Two Boys Underground Mine. Uh, it is a past producing operation. It was uh, underwater for the better part of 15 years. Interestingly, we actually dewatered the mine and found an old haul truck under there, a bit of a museum piece. We won't be using it to mine, but it was cool to recover that. We are into ore at uh, Two Boys. It's very similar to the beta hunt, the fact that the infrastructure is already in place and we expect to, bringing on, to be bringing on higher grade material in the four gram range in the fourth quarter from this asset as well. So looking for to both of these assets starting to elevate the grade profile of Higginsville and helping to deliver into that growth pipeline that we've outlined to you. Higginsville, as I mentioned, is the large, second largest land package in coverage of the Kalgoorlie Belt. In fact, the largest land package that's not owned by a senior gold producer. And the major structure, and what I will use here is the laser pointer. The major structure that hosts uh, the Kalgoorlie Super Pit, which is about 30 million ounces to the north, runs past St. Ives here, which is 14 million ounces, past uh, down six million ounces uh, to Norseman in the south and right underneath our property is called the Zaluka Shear and the Boulder Lefroy Shears. Last year we ran a 400 square kilometer gravity survey over that area in an area that hadn't been explored with modern methods and it returned some very very large anomalies. We overlaid that with our with our structural knowledge of those two major shears and we stepped in with some air core drilling uh, work earlier this year. Drilling about 100 meters vertically to refusal, we reported a result of 50 meters of 1.35 grams from surface, which is an ore grade intercept. Just for those of you who don't know, we are looking for things that were over 0 0.02 grams per ton. So looking for smoke to vector into the target, we already found an ore grade intercept. Not only that, as you can see on this slide, it's directly on strike or along trend. It's called the sleuth trend between Baloo, which is a past producing operation we mined earlier, and Monsoon and Monsoon North. Previous operators at Monsoon North drilled 66 meters of 11 grams per ton, and that ore grade intercept that we returned was right along that trend. Just a few hours ago when we were uh, press release or update on Lake Cowan, happy to say that we confirmed all of the geophysical, structural and geochemical work we had done with RC drilling. And we reported an intercept of three meters at 21.1 uh, grams, another drill intercept of just under a meter of nine grams per ton, validating the work that we've done. When you think of the scale of the deposits that are our immediate neighbors and the fact that this is directly on the major structure that hosts all those deposits, we're certainly getting very excited about the potential underneath Lake Cowan and we'll be following that up with more drilling. Not only did we announce uh, a confirmation of the sleuth trend with excellent results, but we also announced the identification of two new major shear zones right across the Lake Cowan project area. Uh, we've engaged a group called CSA Global to do some work for us, and they helped us identify these shears located directly between the Zaluka shear that I mentioned and the Boulder Lafroy shear, which are the two major areas hosting most deposits in these areas. So we've really unlocked more exploration potential at Lake Cowan. Spargos is, a, is an acquisition, is an open pit mine we acquired for $4 million uh, last year. It's now producing, it's a three gram open pit. That is the open pit resource you see right there. We also announced some tremendous drilling results last December within 100 meters of surface, an ounce per ton over 19 meters, another ounce per ton over 15 meters. We've traced those at depth below the pit. Spargos will become an underground operation once its open pit resource is depleted, and we're looking forward to stepping forward and more exploration there. It is also directly along strike of the same structure as the former Waddle Dam mine and looks very similar in signature. These are uh, slides talking about our valuation and where we believe the re-rating of Corora will happen over the next couple of years. Um, we are a 100,000 ounce year producer today. We're going to be growing towards 200,000 ounces a year. And you look at the valuation of our peers in that production range, all north of a billion dollars. We're sitting here just below half a billion dollars in market capitalization. So certainly an excellent value opportunity. What you have is self-funded growth free cash flow generation and tremendous upside exploration potential all in one package at this valuation in the top, one of the top jurisdictions to mine in the world. So we're very pleased with that. 
$80 million in cash in the balance sheet. Um, with our, we have $30 million in debt. With our operating cash flow, that organic growth profile that I outlined to you is 100% funded organically. We do not need to go out to the market to help uh, you know, accelerate those programs. We also have tremendous research coverage. The latest analyst to launch on us was Ovesa Scotia. We're pleased to have all of them doing excellent work for us. And I believe uh, time is wrapping up, but thank you very much for your time and uh, watch this stock. Thank you, Oliver. I think that uh, is our last presentation.